A Christmas fire cracker. A right fire cracker. I lit up this Christmas. Not intentionally so, but if you set fire to your hair it certainly doesn't go unnoticed. However, I wouldn't recommend it at this time of the year when the emergency services are so stretched. I had been warned. My son said, be careful of that candle. I was, for some reason, bending down and trying to poke spent matches through the air hole of the log burner. The fire wasn't alight, so I could have opened it up, but where's the challenge? It was when I tried it for the second time, ignoring the warning, that it happened. I'm not sure if it was the acrid smell or the heat on my cranium that first indicated that I was on fire. But certainly when my boy commented somewhat amusedly, you know there's smoke coming off the top of your head? I snapped into action, first considering pouring a measure of Lafroig over the top of my skull, but fortunately stopping before the flaming Christmas pudding effect kicked in. So I slapped at the smoldering tonsure and then doused the top of my head in iron brew. The smell lingered for hours, at least until my elder daughter came home from a night out with her pals. What's the smell? She asked. Oh, said the boy. Dad set fire to his hair. Oh right, she said and sat down, as if it was a normal event. After a minute or two she looked around the room and said, Who's that? The sultry one? Earlier in the day I had been rooting around in cupboards and found an old framed photograph of me, probably taken about thirty years ago, which I had put on the antique cabinet my grandmother got when she was a cleaner in the big house and the posh family going bankrupt gave away stuff so their creditors wouldn't benefit. It's me, I said. Daughter is a lawyer so she's accustomed to hurting people. No it's not, shaking her head. She turned to the boy, why is our father putting up photos of strangers in the living room? Early stage dementia, probably, he replied, picking up the TV remote. It's actually the 50th anniversary of the release of the song Fire, which went to the top the charts here and to number two in the States. It was by Arthur Brown, who set fire to his helmet when he sang it. I googled him and he's still on the go and he also sells commemorative candles of the song. I'll pass. I've been asked for an encore on Hogmanay. But I'll pass on that also. The Queen and I. I missed the Queen's speech for, oh, probably the 45th time. That's the last time I'll listen to Jeremy Corbyn's recommendations. I don't know what she said but I'm sure it was dull. But not according to chatter on the internet. Apparently she signaled that she was an ardent Europhile. How? By wearing a blue dress and a circular brooch with twelve diamonds. Vexillologists, and pure mad cranks, say this is a clear support for more on this story, visit the news article link.